The Truck Show Podcast, live from the SEMA Show in Las Vegas. Presented by Nissan, Banks Power, and Toyo Tires. Oh man, I am so giddy right now. <laughs> Why is that? Is that because we're standing at the precipice of uh, Toyo Tires Tread Pass, the big blue, uh, I don't know, what would you call that? A uh, monolith? A, no, not through? a monolith. It's a uh, an arch. But it's not an arch, it's square. But it's isn't it still an arch? I guess it's, it's not a, arch. It's a then. cube. Yeah, it is it's a, a cube. partial cube. I don't know what it is, but I, I want to walk is, through it. Look at all the people and all the cars behind it. I don't know. Let's let's find some builders. Let's find some cool cars. Let's find some people. Okay, so it's a special episode at the SEMA show in the Toyo Tread Pass. All right, let's just thank uh, Nissan really quick, and uh, obviously they are a major part of our show as a presenting sponsor. So if you're looking for a new Nissan uh, truck, a Frontier, or a Titan, head over to NissanUSA.com. And if you're looking for performance parts for your truck, your half ton, or your full size, go to Bankspower.com, type in your year, make, and model, and see what they've got for you. And if you need new tires, uh, come here right now to SEMA where we (laughs) are, and Toyota will give you set. Hop on a plane. Wherever you are. Wherever you are, just come here right now. Yep. Land in Las Vegas, and we'll come get you to the airport. Do you think they'll hear us? Lightning will pick you up. This will still be here when... uh, No, this is long since gone. So they go to your local tire dealer. Yes. Toyotires.com. Now that they know where to find the tires, Mm -hmm. let's go find the cars. All right. The Truck Show. We're going to show you what we know. We're going to answer what the truck... Truck rides with the truck show. We have the lifted, we have the lowered, and everything in between. We'll talk about trucks that run on diesel and the ones that run on gasoline. The truck show, the truck show, the truck show. Oh, oh. It's the truck show with your hosts, Lightning and Holman. Uh, Lamborghini with that Liberty Walk kit on the uh, SUV. Sure is. Oh, I see right. a Maverick. All right, we gotta we gotta find the uh, the owner of the Maverick. Oh, uh, what's on your left? You got a uh, a bunch of Porsches, uh, Scion, E36, uh, what BMW. Is, oh man, what is this guy here? It's pistachio colored, uh, and it's an RX7. RX7 with a V8. Yes, nope. it is. No, no it's no. not. It? It's V12. Oh my lord, an RX7 with a V12. Well, that seems uh, blasphemous. <laughs> See a Willys over there? What's up with these Trio Mercedes, Mercedes SLs? Roasters? Let's figure this out really quick. We, we've got to find we some... We seem like we're all messed up. We are because I, I, don't, I don't have to look at it anymore. <laughs> There's just stuff everywhere. So, all right. Let's figure out who the builders are. Let's get some interviews. Okay. And uh, you need to wipe that drool right off your ugly face. Oh, you can still see it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. We are here with uh, Spencer Brimhall. Spencer, you have a beautiful... This is a 63 C10? Yeah, it says 1963 GMC C1000. So C1000. That was GMC. Yeah. GMC. Yeah, oh, so that's right. Uh, still the same platform as the I was, uh, So I was standing over the grill, not do looking Do you not know your trucks? How long have you been doing this for? <laughs> all I had to do is bend down and read the GMC. So the problem is, is that it's dumped so far that GMC is about at ankle height for you. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, this thing's rad. So uh, we're looking at, it's, it's kind of got a, uh, like a, what would you call it, a seafoam sort of color? So teal? this is a, aqua, uh, a deep aqua teal. Okay. Not little sure patina what on it. Is. You got yeah. a white, white roof and cab, and then you've got... Some sort of odd motorcycle contraptions. Uh, those are electric. Tied down to the back, <laughs> but they match the patina of the truck, which is super rad. Yeah, so those are uh, cake bikes. So they are little electric uh, bikes, basically like mountain ones. Uh, I think they get up to like 40 miles an hour. They nice. actually rip on the dirt road. But man, it's... so do you drive your dump GMC to the start of the dirt road, and then you take <laughs> off the bikes to go the rest of the way? <laughs> yeah, but actually, you, can, you can't even get onto the dirt road with this truck. You just, you just grade it. Yeah, you basically just ruin that back half. <laughs> so, what's the story with the truck? Tell us, how did you come upon it? Why did you build it? So, yeah, my cousin he uh, gave me like his dream truck. He was like, I want a C10. And I happened to be online, like Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, KSL, and Utah. And uh, I just happened to stumble upon it. So I just kept on sending him different ones. And it took, it was on for two minutes. And I threw it at him. He goes, hey, go look at it. So I went and picked it up for him. For it was only grand. listed for two minutes. For two minutes, yeah. So I went and picked it up for him for six grand. Everybody then, who's had a uh, vehicle online for like six months is really sad about that story right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this truck is in high demand, especially you said only 6K? Yeah, 6K for it. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, and then we got that. We brought it back in. Uh, I did the electrical harness because it was just fried before. 
they're grounding it out with uh, sheet metal screws and wrapping around it. Your man Jay here has a so. similar truck, <laughs> and his wiring harness was actually, when you would sit in and drive it, would arc and rub the top of your kneecaps under the dash as you go around corners. <laughs> it, it would was, wake you up. Yeah. Oh, holy crap. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's not that bad right now. Um, but yeah, so we took it apart, got the harness done, got running, and my cousins threw the idea for uh, SEMA. So we about mid or late September, we got the approval. And it's been a month and a half of me just uh, recut or cutting that whole subframe in the back and welding uh, three by six inch uh, square tubing all the way through, uh, running four link suspension, a 67 Camaro GM uh, rear end with the LSD in it, uh, shortened axles, changed the lug pattern to five by five and to fit it with the uh, Boston wheels. Basically we designed the truck around those wheels. You had to have the wheels? We didn't have the wheels in time. Uh, oh. We had, we had some uh, going to get made for this truck specific. Got it. But we ran into some problems. Boston hooked it us up with the last minute save with these wheels. Awesome. And I had to create that whole rear end just to fit them. Oh my gosh. Uh, so originally I had a 14 bolt rear axle. Then I swapped it to a 10 GM. And then I went to a 12. <laughs> so, Gee, why? <laughs> uh, because everything was just, the, the width on those uh, the other two were way too wide. Well, it's way better with a 12 bolt over a 10 if you can do burnouts anyway, so. Yes, yeah. <laughs> we're going to try to back this with a uh, probably LM7 uh, Gen 4. Wow. Uh, five What's under right now? Uh, it's just a small block 350. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure about transmission. I haven't actually looked at it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, back up to the point at which you wanted to come to SEMA, but you got the green light and then you started building? Like, how did that happen? Uh, so that's all my cousin. Uh, he's Aaron Brimhall. He's the absolute, like, wizard of marketing, I swear. Um, <laughs> so he's talking with Stan. And, at Toyo. Yeah, at Toyo. We sent some renders from, we got some renders from Boston Wheels. We finally got it into Stan at Toyo. And they're like, yeah, let's go. Like, let's get it in. My cousin's like, hey, it's it's crunch time. <laughs> <laughs> How many weeks did you have? S seven weeks. Seven weeks. So this is a seven week build. Yeah, seven week build. Is the paint still wet if I were to touch it right now? Oh, you can touch it. It's, <laughs> it's all dry. I didn't even uh, have to do the paint. I just sanded it down. Uh, used the uh, vinegar, salt, and hydroperoxide trick to do the patina. And it turned out really well. It actually does look really yeah. good. Okay, yeah. so Holman, walk around back with me. Yeah. And I want you to see under this uh, mesh grate that he has under the uh, yep. the two dirt bikes. So basically his bed floor, which is even with the bed sills, uh, is a mesh grate so that you can see what's going on on the back. And uh, yeah, that thing is uh, linked and bad. Look at the size of those airbags on the back and those uh, joints, man. Those, yeah. those bags are uh, what, D2600s from airlift suspension. So yeah, I like we, how you have the compressor everything up out not hidden. It's up on top of the yeah. bed. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just below the rear window. Yep. Yep. The tank and compressor and all that stuff. It looks really good. And you went with the uh, the Flow Air Ride with the uh, billet end caps? Yes. Yeah. So Airlift, holy crap, they hooked us up with this setup. It took them like two days to get it out to us. I told them what I want, what type of fittings that we needed, and they just sent out their best kit. What we did was the dual tanks just to be able to pump it up a little quicker, but um, it does drain a lot of voltage, so we gotta make sure that voltage doesn't drop or we'll start to faulting, but. Um, <laughs> you need yeah. a better battery, so you need like a big so braille a lithium ion. A, ba a bigger alternator is what we need. Um, you need but, to talk to Meckman for that. Yeah, Meckman? No, I'm not joking, seriously, Meckman. They're right inside that door, and they're amazing. Oh, actually, I'll tell you the story on how we got this in here, but um, yeah, what we did was we raised this up all the way to the top of the bed, made it flush. We put uh, cherry wood, uh, and did a um, basically a satin stain on it. Looks good. Um, to, and it matched the, the seat done by Bear Scar. He did a butter rum leather and uh, the golf plaid inside. And then on here on the top, we had Hive Garage right over here. He, he did the, uh, the all the copper tubing on this and did, did the mounting, made sure it was uh, super clean up top. Underneath here, we also did the Kind of like a Tetris or snake style with the wiring harness, so you can actually see how the wiring harness is hooked I in. I like the Tetris reference. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wanted to make sure everybody was able to enjoy like seeing the work because a lot of the stuff here at Seam, I would feel like it was kind of hidden. Uh, so I left everything raw. And let's I, be honest though, you did it because you only had six weeks. No, <laughs> I wish. Yeah, I wish you said you had some crazy story about how this truck got in here. <laughs> so we got it in. Uh, we had it at the uh, parking lot about two miles away. And we were just finishing up some touches on the uh, the clutch and found out the uh, clutch fork 
or either the throwout bearing is blown oh, no. or the clutch sleeve or the slave cylinder, the rod is pushed under the, uh, the clutch fork. So we couldn't engage it in gear. So we, uh, my little brother has a Honda Civic. <laughs> <laughs> we got some Walmart straps and we towed it from there all the way to the uh, tread pass booth. And you see six of us running beside it. People are looking at us, yelling at us like, it's the other way around, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you as the uh, poster truck for OSHA, is this okay? <laughs> yeah, not to rip on anybody else, but apparently that Civic pulls more than most of these trucks here. <laughs> hey, Thank you, All right, well, yeah. dude, Spencer, awesome uh, ride. Thanks for sharing with us, and uh, hopefully you've had a lot of great uh, feedback here at SEMA this year. Yeah, it's, uh, man, I can't believe I made it here. If it wasn't for my cousin, even my brothers, Parker and Zach, for uh, teaching me how to do this stuff, I wouldn't be here today. So uh, I'm grateful to meet you guys and yeah, man. enjoy your time, and uh, hopefully we can get some more promotion off of this stuff. <laughs> well, All right. I'm, I'm grateful for uh, Toyo for you know kind of going out on a limb because they didn't really know what they were going to get, and it turned out beautiful. Yeah, they didn't even meet me first. If they met me, they would be like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, That's how we here. felt. That's why we only do audio, because yeah, they, if they can't see us, they think we're more professional than we are. Well, you guys are standing pretty far back from me. Am I scaring you that bad? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Spencer. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> So uh, George from APG, yeah, APG, right? So we had had you on uh, talking about like the basically the little Ranger long travel kit. That's right. You guys right. are doing out of Garden Grove. Yeah. And uh, you brought one of your Broncos on 40s, and so we kind of talked about this on the podcast because it was like, all right, I got to know what he's doing because 40s and Bronco not necessarily synonymous right now. I think yeah. every everybody has a clip of you know the steering blowing out on the front and, and all that kind of stuff. This right thing now. is gorgeous. We appreciate we, so, we, we, I appreciate that. So yeah, we, I got to know what you did, but first let's describe it. Obviously, it has that APG sort of vibe. Yeah. Got the carbon fiber on the fender. And by the way, your flares on this thing appreciate so it. much better than a Raptor or bra- <laughs> a Raptor. You, you, you know, you. oh my gosh. Um, and then you've got, geez, it looks like uh, giant kings all over, bypass, oh, yeah. fin tube. Oh, yeah. You didn't spare any expense on this thing. No. I wanted to bring the most high-end quality of bespoke building to an off-road Ford Bronco. Awesome. Okay? A lot of times in the off-road community, it's always, you know, awesome suspension system and just kind of buy some fiberglass body kit. Sure. But wh- why can't an off-road vehicle be bespoke? Why can't you yep. have an off-road vehicle look perfect? Why not? And that's exactly what we wanted to deliver. So we started with Ranger Pro Runner, was the first model, and now I wanted to take him to the Bronco, which Bronco and Ranger are very similar platforms. Sure. Identical chassis, yep. identical, but one has a big box in the back. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> one doesn't. So Bronco Pro Runner, I mean, there's a lot of details on this thing. How, how well, do you, you guys want to start in a corner? We want to start in a corner because I can't tell where the original uh, body starts well, what I'm and, lo- and where yours begins. Oh, you guys can't see this on Let's the podcast, but if we're looking at, like, for example, the rear fender flare, uh, the way the body line sort of disappears in here and then reemerges in this little kick up yep. to, to bring it out. And it kind of has like a little Mustang undertone in Absolutely. there a little bit. Uh, maybe a little bit uh, Ford Raptor on there. So some, some kick. Sort of a shelf kick. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. There, there, in automotive design, when you're wanting to make it some sort of wide body system, you can. there's different ways of getting to a further point. Sure. A step, a rock, a flare, a bulge. Yep. We like to or the ugliest those. piece of rubber made yeah. trash can <laughs> material ever known to man if you are a certain OE. Your 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 words, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this outside line, like let, let's talk about just general shapes, sure. right? This outside line right here. Driver's side rear quarter panel. Correct. Right. This outer yellow flange, that is the width of a Sasquatch Bronco outside okay. of the plastic fender flare. Okay, yeah. Okay. So f- from this point, how much how much tire poke do you want? Right, you know, right, if you're spending right, yeah. a lot of time on the rocks, yep. you don't want to get damage on the side. Right. Especially with this beautiful. nice carbon fiber. Exactly. This is a real carbon fiber on Real. Here. That's the real yeah. deal. Okay. So if you want tire poke, you want protection, you can go for these like one inch flares. Yeah. And then we actually have three inch. A full coverage. And yeah. five inch, which I actually okay. have one in the back. Which I think is a people way. People can't see. This is a way more elegant solution than bolting on a big giant piece of plastic. I mean, the, the, I like the idea that you can replace the fender lip to get additional coverage sure. and make that the modular piece so that your customers can decide exactly how much coverage they want. How is this fastened, by the way? Very, very neat. F- from behind where, where you can't see. So the front attaches in the back with some, with some circlips. The back actually actually has a nut and a, nut and a bolt because you have access. But if you look under the front, the whole front liners are all carbon as well. And oh, it's wow. not just because it's pretty, but it's strong. It ties together the whole front end. Yeah, sure. So it's clean. Right, so if again, just kind of bringing back the whole flare, it's not just a flare, it's the whole replacement fender. Ah. This is SLS3 printed fuel door. Most wide body systems that you see, 
they will reuse this because it's very complex. Right, right. But then whatever design and shape is on the door, you have to implement that into your body. Or you have to have a chamfer here or something like that. You so that, see the, that. the exactly. soft field door is like Frenched in yeah, because so they we, didn't, yeah. Yeah, I moved this up. So you 3D you printed this out of, uh, is it nylon? What'd you use? SLS high tech SLS. Nylon. Yeah, okay. SLS nylon. And just, and it's, it's, it's OE. It's and it's perfect. It, it, it looks amazing. Closes, functions, you still get the locking. Yeah. Not, it's not and a I mean, race setup, I mean, it's even, OEM. Even the radius here and where they meet, I mean, it's all flush. It's just a really beautiful fit. I, w I wish there was video attached to this. I, I, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. This is a very yellow Bronco. It is very yes, yellow. Is. I do have a color for it. What is it called? I call it not so mellow, yellow. <laughs> yeah, definitely not mellow at all. Yeah, man. All right, so you're running the uh, Toyo Open Country uh, MTs in a, uh, a 40, 1350 on, um, are these 20s or 17s? What are yeah, you? Actually, 17s. 17s. All right, so you have, you have all the sidewall on this. All the sidewall on it, you know. But Toyo does a really good job of making a tire that, even though it's a 40, a 40 on a 17, yeah. it's not going to collapse on a 40. No, and it's super round. Super round. Yeah. And they're not loud. I mean, I drive them Those on, are great the tire. on the phone. I got 50, 60,000 miles off road tire, which is fantastic. Yeah. It's got the vehicle's not just body, it's got a lot of suspension. Okay. Yeah. The rear's got a full custom Dana seven inch overstock ultimate 60 axle. So you got 60 in the back. I got right? a 60 yeah, okay. in the back. It's got 14 inch 3 0 coil overs from yep. King. Race series with yep. internal bypass, long fin race resis, yep. and a 3 2 bypass. How Hard. much travel are you getting out of it? 18 and a half inches in the rear. Without and any and cut into the body or anything? No contact, wow. front and rear, full tuck, full turn, front and rear. Right. A little bit less in the front where yeah. we were on an IFS. Yep. We've got about 16 and a half That's inches. That's still an incredible amount of travel. on a 40. When no are we contact. taking this out? I, I want to drive it. I want to, seriously, we I want to experience. over this wall right now. Yeah, we probably could. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're right down the street from us. So at some come point, I, shop, I, yeah, guys, I need to. One of the best things, come by the shop and not just see like the finished product. Yeah. Look at the process throughout it. Yeah. We really care about those details. Sure. And the details matter. So if, you, if, you, if you're up front and you see how perfect everything yeah. is, look at the gaps, look at the lines. Well, I've seen your vehicles. Like, so it's one thing for you to have the show vehicle, the company build that you're that you're promoting here at Toyo. It's another thing to have a customer car. And I've seen your customer cars, and they're just as good. This will be the worst Ford Bronco we ever built because we will always get better. Every yeah. single vehicle we build, we do a, we get better. All the techs learn better, faster ways to do things. Yeah. How do you? And we always improve. We we believe in the product. This isn't just some something slapped together. Every component was designed, engineered, and installed by the guys, in house. What gears are you running? Five thirty eight. And then what's? Uh, let's walk to the front real let's quick. I want to I want to go over the front suspension on this thing because. How much more is you? By the way, I want to know. Factory. Th this came with a Sasquatch. It was four seventy gearing. So we jumped up to five thirty eight to yep. accommodate tire sizing. And obviously got all that calibrated all through Ford Performance. Okay, so I'm gonna, I want to kind of talk about the suspension a little yeah, bit. Yeah, because this this is the down. magic of this whole build, right? This is the thing that everybody these, these upper control arms are a work of art. Yeah, I appreciate you that. Build it, B beautiful. Build it, build it the world, as they say. Yeah, that's right. right. All right, so oh, we need that as a T-shirt. Home. <laughs> build, build, build the, the world. world. Yeah, yeah, bolt like on it. bling. Build it the world. Yeah, but then George is gonna charge us the licensing fee on it. I hear, hereby say I I relieve my relinquish my rights for licensing oh. collection. So it is oh. it is entirely for the Truck Show podcast. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, you, I see that you have our our friend uh, at Apex Designs. You got your yes, uh, we quick do. Relief we love these, yes. and they are now. Gonna, I'm I'm putting them on every vehicle I build. No They're amazing. Asked. They installed perfectly. Yeah, yeah. I've heard some others leak. These I, didn't. I, I the only ones I ever saw leak was when you couldn't put the pull tab down all the way on them. And if it doesn't seed all the way, there's, there'll be a little bit of leak. But if you don't have that issue, he yeah. makes the long stem as yep, well. Yep, yep. And and you know Paul and the crew over there, awesome. And and you can use your wheel sensors on the backside. They're made to, for factory wheels too. A friend of mine in, in IT taught me some couple letters and numbers. It's called ID10T. It communicates in code to user error. So if they're installed <laughs> incorrectly. Yeah. yeah. ID10T. ID10T. ID 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 I need that t-shirt. Right? Yeah. I'm going to wear that all the time. He is also, uh, a moving error. user error. Also relinquish the rights to that one. ID10T. Right. So we're looking at, at the, the suspension. So, right. so the, I first thing I did is took a saw to the whole shock tower. Yeah. I, I cut it off. Yeah. I wanted to make it taller, which we can fit a longer shock body yep. and a wider shock body. So Largest coilover you can fit in a factory tower is a 2.5 inch diameter, and I wanted three. So I, wa I wanted a larger diameter shock body because a lot of the way, a lot of times how it's done yeah. is when you go heavy and you really guys are really going hard. Yeah, yeah. They put a secondary bypass shock, right? Which I love bypass. They're incredible. Oh, bypass is the way to go. If you, can, if you have the space, the real estate, and you can afford it, bypass is the there way to go. go. But they, they they do make audible noises, yep. right? And some yep. people don't want to stand the clicking. Like clicking. Yep. So yeah. with 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 King's internal bypass design, you can. There's so much shock body that you can incredibly run a 40 inch tall tire without without the option for bypasses, so it's quieter. Yeah. And a lot of guys, you know, they're not running at 100 miles an hour. In the right, desert. right. They just want to go out, family trails, go do their hobbies or their activities, and they want it to be quiet. So I wanted to have the design around it. 
plus bigger is kind of yeah, better. That when way you can shocks. you can swap out whichever one they want that's scalable to scalable. The, the biggest user all the way down to the, the Weekend Warrior guy. Yep. So chopped off the shock tower, enlarged it, double sheared it, raised it up, got all that done. The control arms, upper and lower, are three and a half inches longer from yep. pivot okay. on yep. the vehicle. So that's How much allowing. wider, uh, tr total seven inches? Total track? Seven, correct, three okay. and a half per yeah. side. Plus yep. then with wheels, tires, offsetting, yeah. it, depending on the selection, that, yeah. that can change it. Sure. But when you go with a larger shock body, you also incorporate a lot of problems, right? Well, you get, I mean, there's Axles, a lot. Axles, tie rod clearances. But even you get into a bigger piston and you start getting into additional spring rate in the piston. 100%. So you get into the, the situation where your piston size, if you don't have enough mass to move it, mm -hmm. is now adding spring rate that you have to c compensate for elsewhere in the design, settings. rent yep. tuning, right? And King did an amazing job getting the, the sprung and unsprung valve settings and spring settings perfect for us. Nice. This thing drives incredible on, on the On the first go, or did you bring oh, it to no. them and they... We, we ha only way to test is by multiple test yep. series in the desert and on the highway. So we yep. did multiple removals, multiple reinstalls after getting different valve selections. And once we came up with a couple base standards, we think that's good to kind of give everybody they can, you can fine tune it more based on how much weight you're carrying, yeah, things yeah. like that. But right now, this is set up perfectly for the masses. I, I mean, I, I'll, I'll be, I'll be the first to admit when I saw a Bronco in 40s, I didn't even realize the first photos that came out that it was you guys. And I was like, I don't know. I mean, I, I hope they did it right. And then when I figured out it was you, and I started seeing what you're, I was like, okay, all right, yeah, I'm on board. But in the beginning, I was just like, it's just another guy trying to put a big tire on a Bronco. No, absolutely no, Everything not. is amazing. I, everything I always, you've done here is, is incredible. I always say a chain is as strong as the weakest link. Sure. And if you're gonna put it greater rotating mass tires, you know, you need to make sure to have a, a, a drivetrain that can handle it. Yep. Look, the, 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 a lot of people are so stuck on forge rack and pinion that everyone is steering, the steering, the steering. Yeah, yeah. Look, it, it is true, their Gen 1 steering system is... Yeah. And is they've upgraded bit, it in yes, production since have. then. And they have options, but it's not just a strong componentry. You also have to know, this is not a solid axle. Yeah, the geometry needs to... You need to, to know yeah. the geometry, and you need to know if my... If you're, if you're rock crawling, and you turn the wheel all the way, and you're drooped out, yep. and your wheel's not turning anymore, yep. stop trying to turn. Yeah, yeah. Your steering you're binding limit, it up. Your steering limits have already hit yeah, because right. independent suspension yep. has a turning radius based and on the wheel track. And now all you're doing path. is taking yeah. that hydraulic effort and sh shoving parts together that shouldn't be. And you you're, can't turn. Yeah. It doesn't work. So yeah. if, you, if you're trying to turn, it's not turning. Stop trying to turn. That's the that's the moral of the story. What but front axle do you have? It's, got a, it's also a whole new Dana front axle. Okay. As well. It's the Adventech 44. Okay. Which has got incredible bearings. So that's like a 220 millimeter, probably. It, 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 it starts on the MT20 platform. Yeah, yeah. okay. But yeah, it's yeah. iron housing, yeah, iron yeah. half shaft housing. It's all. It, yeah. It's been called very close to the strength of like what a Dana 60 yeah, yeah, yeah. would be. And this is the strongest front drive unit that is available for a Bronco. For a Bronco. Yeah, yeah. So as more, as Bronco gets out there and as more products become available, yeah. we're going to be the first to test them and to, and to put them on. Great. But it's. There are race car applications out there. Guys are putting yeah. uh, a 40, there's a guy out there who's got 42s on a Ford Bronco, mm -hmm. right on. Yeah. But that's a race car application. You, the calibration's not there, the, 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 sure. the tone rings on the hubs. It's All of it. I, I want this to be a complete OE replacement conversion. Well, tell me about the fabricated lower control arms. Oh yeah, those are beefy. They're heavy They're and strong. Giant. Yeah, so all tick construction box lowers, hooked up all with spherical bearings, design, cut, manufacture, all in-house. Um, and also, you know, you do have the option for a secondary shock. So it's got that secondary shock down there at the bottom. The idea is really to get that wheel pushed out further so you get that additional wheel travel and strength. You so said you designed it or they did? It was all designed by APG in-house. Okay. Yep. Joe, you're the man. <laughs> yeah, awesome, man. How did you recalibrate for the tire size? Because no one's into the CCM yet, are they? Corey Ducklow, Ford Performance, I'm ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> you're out there. Uh, actually, the uh, calibration was just released about two weeks ago from Ford Performance, and now you're going to see Whipple and all the rest yeah, of the yeah. guys. It, 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 it is brand new, which is why we're going to market now, because this has been the last piece of the sure. puzzle for Bronco. And now. it's got to be right. And it's got to be right. Now that that's there, uh, we're going to start production basically as soon as we get back to the shop. Who's uh, Light Rack on the front here? So you've got, uh, tell us about this. Yeah, this is all, I mean, Baja Designs is, is, our, is our lining partner. These yep. guys make an incredible That's what I'm product. running on my stuff. Yeah, other, Baja Designs stuff. is the man. So we've got a, we've got an eight pod upper windshield light up here that puts out a tremendous amount of power. I don't know the exact specs on the output because every two weeks they release are, something uh, better than before. Squadron Pros? Squadron Pros, yeah. Uh, actually, actually, XLs. XLs, yeah. yeah it's a combination the big of guys. sports and pros. Yep. And we've got some XL Pros here on the ditch lights. Yep. We've even got rock lights underglow on mm -hmm. all the wheel wells so you can see that beautiful awesome. suspension. It's, it's awesome. a show car. You yeah, want to yeah, make yeah, it pretty, right? Of course. Yeah. And then down here on the bumper, you've, you've got a couple, uh, couple, couple squadrons and a couple um, you know, uh, fog kits, as, as they call them. And then you've got an upper bumper light. You know, lights are... 
Well, I should become something fashionable, but yeah. you know, I they still got to work. They still have to work. I, I run fast at nighttime, and I yeah. want a lot of light. Yeah, yeah. You know, I want light. I want. It's not just I want a lot of light. I want right light. Yeah. I want it. I want it where I want it when I want it, and I want certain beings. Yeah, that will angles. ruin your day if, especially on a moonless night out in the desert oh, where there's yeah. no light. If you don't have your lights aimed right, or or don't have enough light, and you're trying to overdrive, or you just can't get to the speed you want to be to make time. I mean, sure. it, lights can make or break your trip a lot. I of feel time. like there needs to be a whole podcast we should do, like just to talk about lighting. Yeah, there's huge people think more light is better. It's yeah. I, I think there's a lot more to it. I, I, yeah, we've had uh, Baja Designs on. We actually we'll probably have them back on because their open house is coming up awesome. in, in next month. But um, yeah, it's it's I love how they kind of stage it with their. Um, their zones, the yep. light zones. So you can understand yeah. what, where exactly these lights are. Because it used to be in this industry, you talk about a pencil beam, a spot beam. With Baja doing zones and showing you what their lights are capable of, yeah. you can really plan what that pattern looks like. And, and, that, and that lets the customer who, who, who's not so knowledgeable. Just some confidence. Just some confidence. Like, yeah, yeah okay, that, this is what I'm yeah. going. This is how fast I'm These going. are not cheap. No. I mean, you, you have a lot of Benjamins and lights hanging on the front of There's this There's a thing. lot of Benjamins on no. this whole vehicle. <laughs> no, if you had to guess, just the lights facing forward, Six, five, five grand? I would say, uh, yeah, about fifty-five to sixty-five hundred dollars yeah, front guessing. lights, yeah, approximately. Okay. Yep. But okay. you know, more light, better light. You're you're yeah. also safer out there. Way safer. Yeah. And, and if you are running fast, you, you need that for safety. Yeah. So I I say don't scamp on lights. That's one of the biggest Agree. things I say. Can we, do we have that for a t-shirt also? Don't skip on lights. <laughs> don't skip on lights. Yeah. Don't skip on shocks. Don't skip on like, anything. <laughs> yeah, that's right. How about interior? Anything done to the interior? No, no. I, I'm not an interior guy. I, I'm very much, APG stands for Automotive Performance Group. I'm not, and I want the performance to look good, yeah, yeah. but interior, I like My I butt demands guy. performance. Yes. Got the seat heater. <laughs> yes, you're gonna have to talk to a butt performance well, engineer let me, guy. <laughs> there, they, <laughs> oh, that's my next t-shirt, butt performance engineer. No. <laughs> oh, Listen, here's the deal. Your butt will feel performance in this thing. <laughs> yes, it will. Right? I mean, the, your butt dyno is going to know exactly what the shocks are doing. <laughs> but you just said butt dyno. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, there's a lot, a, really a lot that went into this, and without kind of having video to, yeah. to, to really see it, but this has been a, a, a thought out 13 month project yeah. for me. Okay. Your, your passion comes through. The first time we talked to you, your passion came through. It's so good to meet you in person. Absolutely. Like, I, we, seriously, we want to come down to the shop and check come it out. Come down, man. It's fun. We got yeah. a cool shop. We do it all in house too. All right. Composites, fabrication. Yeah. Uncle, where are you? So Garden, Garden Grove. Grove. Oh dang. That's next, what I'm next door to King Shocks. Oh okay. I can see. Yeah. We really are proud be. of this. It's a lot of work, and honestly, I give it all. I give it all to my guys. This is the only Bronco, and I'll be dead honest with you, that make the mirrors look small. <laughs> <laughs> thank you good night thank you tip your waitress on the way out alright George dude, again right so nice to talk thank to you, you and, like, Hold on, we gotta, gotta keep in touch much. because we're not done with you yet alright just for today right. but we, we'll circle back alright I'll tell you what just get the shirts going get all, get all the slogans and the trademarks going <laughs> and then uh, we'll split the royalties Okay. alright deal we're in alright cool right on guys thank you. thank you this Maverick rules it is so 80s and I'm so in love How's it going? My name is Brian Garcia Torado. I'm with Leaf Johnson Ford out of Austin, Texas, and we got our 2022 Ford Maverick. All right, what did it start as? Is this the base model hybrid, or is this the uh, up-level engine? Like, where did you start? Is it all-wheel drive, two-wheel drive? So this one is the front-wheel drive, okay. two-wheel drive, yep. uh, Maverick XLT. So we stuck with the front-wheel drive because okay. we did put airbags on it. Sure. And with the all-wheel drive, we were having some issues with that. Yeah. Um, so that's how this Maverick started life out as, and it was just a black truck, essentially. Let's describe the Maverick. It the graphics. Is, it is an. It is like 80s and cocaine, <laughs> yeah. all over. Like Miami style. Like this is like late 80s, early 90s. It's got hot pink. It's got white. It's got black. It's this like cool turquoise color. You know Wheels what this are white. is? Mirror caps are, are are pink. Holman, these are the vehicle version of Oakley blades. These. This might be a modern Oakley blade. <laughs> all right. So Brian, before we start the podcast, you told us the theme or the vibe that you're going for. So explain yeah. to our audience what you're going for and why it looks like this. Yeah, absolutely. So it's been a long time since anybody has really come out with an OE, you know, compact truck. You've got the medium sized truck. So when the Ford Maverick was announced, we thought, wow, what would a mini truck look like in today's day and age? And we started kind of playing with the idea and it kind of came to life. <laughs> so it started out, I was kind of like, that'd be kind of cool to, we're going to do it. So I'm, I'm looking at uh, your wheel and tire package here, and you guys are running the uh, the Proxus ST3s, which is obviously a, uh, a great tire, but you were able to shove a 265 35 22 under the front of this thing. And I am two fingers from the top of the tread to yeah, the, uh, like the flare. Yep. <laughs> is, it, is it dumped right now? So right now it is dumped, Yeah. right? And you can drive it 
with the air suspension dump like this, it is pretty rough, <laughs> and you hit the tires and the fender liners. It doesn't hit the fenders. Uh, but yeah, we wanted to get that mean stance. It's got to look oh, you modern. Did it. Yeah. But it's not when we say dumped. It's not tucked. Like this no, no, is no, still not, classic. Not, like I said, I have two fingers. It's 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 not. You're not laying unibody. <laughs> no, yeah, we're definitely not laying frame in this thing or scraping bedpans anytime soon. Um, but we just want to make sure that it did look cool rolling down the road. What's the uh, wake and base? Wake and base. <laughs> yeah. It says wake and base That's right on the, on, the, on, the, on the gill right here. There's a lot of different ways you can take that. Yeah, so I mean, so wake and base, right? So if you look at the way we spelled wake, right? Yep. Like wakeboard, wake yep. boat. Yep. So we do have a wake tower in the back of the bed. All right, come on, walk up. back there. All right. A hot pink wake tower this is with... Uh, what is that? So you have two, is it like uh, 10 inch and two 8 inch JBL? That's uh, correct, speaker. JBL Marine Grade speakers. <laughs> just, so. just shooting out the sound can and, <laughs> and shooting out the back of this and thing. And it's loud. The funny thing is, they actually light up. So when you put like the red <laughs> or the pink, it looks like some cannon thrusters on the back of the truck. <laughs> but it is really loud. That's why it's called the Wake and Bass. So, okay, this is what I'm digging about this. So you have the Wake Bar Tower, except it's on. Hydraulic struts so that you can yeah, fold it down out of the way and then roll the tonneau cover. And the other thing I like about it is you have the Radis 80 style ducktail yeah. um, <laughs> spoiler on the back of the uh, on the back of the bed, which is super cool. Yeah, so we uh, definitely when you put the wake tower down and you roll the bed cover back, we still want it to look sporty. Yeah, right. So with this big duckbill spoiler, we were like, we have to make one. And the mounting points on top of the tailgate made it super easy when we 3D scanned it. So you can just snap this duckbill right into the bed. Are you guys going to sell that as an accessory through uh, work for uh, potential customers? Yeah, absolutely. So the entire body kit, you can buy the entire body kit as one. So the rear roll pan, the duck build, the flares, the rockers, the front bumper and splitter. I'm still laughing because a, a Maverick <laughs> has a roll pan on the back. Yeah, it, it looks great though, but it's just funny to see. Who like, we, Who are we buying this kit from? So the kit, uh, you can buy from 3D Carbon or you can go to Leave Johnson Ford, um, LJSV Customs, and you can order the kit through there. So you guys basically, through the dealership, have a, a specialty vehicle arm? Yes, so absolutely. If somebody buys a, a vehicle from you, you guys can outfit it however they want. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So the concept is you can, you know, mild to wild, and you don't have to risk losing your warranty. If you need to get worked on, you can bring it into the dealership. Because you guys are going to be warranty friendly because you did the mods. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, so the whole thing, we've been modifying vehicles for a while now, but we never designed our own body kit. Sure. So this was done in collaboration with Molly Celine from Celine Performance Parts and got the Maverick, 3D scanned everything, had the rendering and brought it to life. Yeah, dude, this thing is rad. The, uh, the tail lights on it are, have been smoked, uh, but only the light lenses. So if you're familiar with a, a Maverick, there's like a piece of chrome trim inside the lens in the middle you left that part clear so that the chrome still pops out right and with the white black graphics overlaid on the teal there's that little splash of color that comes out there yeah. a little splash of like brightness through it which is really cool yeah we like the uh kind of like the euro look right you still got the chrome and white kind of sticking out so yep. that's why we went that route and now the graphic i wouldn't say it's a it's not like a tear graphic it's not like a lightning bolt well, it's sort it, of like it, a, it angles back like a tear graphic uh, would. but it's, yeah but it's not it's almost like a like modern Qbert or something like that. If you remember the Qbert yeah. squares that you you know yeah. in the old video game, it definitely has an eight bit kind of video game vibe to it. Yeah, kind of eight bit. Again, you mentioned earlier eighties retro vibe. Yeah. That's what we were really going for, where it's like super pixelated, and I think we achieved it. Yeah, no, dude, this thing is really really cool. This is uh, the green is paint or a wrap. The teal here. So the teal here is actually paint, okay. and we are actually going to take this wrap, and it's going to all be paint. So there's going to be no graphics on it. Everything's going to be paint. Even the logos, we're going to paint everything in once we get back to Texas. It's funny because as much as the aquamarine, like you walk by and you're like, whoa, hot pink. I haven't seen neon pink since yeah. my jams shorts or something like that, right? Uh, Jimmy's? Those are, Jimmy's? Jams. Oh, jams. jams. Oh, jams. Dude, I'm saying if you're our age, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> J-A-M-Z, right? I think so, it's yeah. Jams. So when you walk, when you step back from it, though, and you see the teal, the white, and the black, it needs that pop of color. And oh, it's yeah. almost like that hot pink is, is the absolute perfect there's no other color I can think of looking at the truck right now. I wouldn't have done it any different. And, yeah. and that pink is just perfect. Like I could, I would almost, uh, maybe the door handles need it too or something, something in here. No, right? no, no, I, it no it's, is? it's exactly right. Yeah. And that hot pink is almost fluorescent. It's not, it's but hot, it's, it's the, hot pink. It's, yeah. it's, it's the rocket red crayon in your uh, Crayola box. Yeah. It's bubblicious, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's bubble bubblicious gum. is pink. Is it? Oh, it's, this is nowhere near okay. bubblegum. Right. No. Yeah. And the last thing too is like, 
the, you don't have to buy the entire body kit. You can actually buy pieces of it. So if you just really dig in that front bumper, you yeah. can grab that. If you, for whatever reason, want to lift your Maverick and you need some flares, you can purchase the flares separate as well. So we're making it as friendly as possible for the people that want to customize it their way, or maybe they just want the roll pan, they can go that route. Dude, right on. Congrats. This is yeah, rad. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate hey, it. Thank you for bringing this you, uh, to the to the folks like us. I hope it goes on Instagram as rad something or license plate the rad. No, it's Wake and Base. I know, but it's rad. Yeah, it's Wake and Base. It's super rad. You mentioned the hot pink, man. Some people already on the YouTube video, they love it or they hate it. No, you got to so love far, it. So far, a lot more people love it than they hate it. Yeah, the, the haters, they, they're they probably young and didn't grow up where we did. Like, this yeah. is just a throwback, man. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Yeah, appreciate it. it cool, is, man. Uh, Still in the Tread Pass, and we're meeting up with Jerry. And Jerry, you created one hell of a Willys. I did. It's a 1950 Willis. Uh, we did a bunch of body modifications. By the way, did you catch that? Willis. Yeah, that's yeah. right, because that's the proper that's the proper way to say it. And everybody says Willys, which okay. is like, but it's Willis is the proper yeah, way. So, right. that so you from know, now on, I'm going to say Willis. We yeah. are speaking to it a true a Jeep enthusiast, a true Jeep uh, aficionado, because he said Willis the proper way. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah. Now, now why is it Willis? Because that's how the man it. pronounces his name. Really? Why but is your last name Tillis and not Tile? No, leads? because it's two L's, so it's I is short. Right. I'll take over. What do you guys want to know about it? <laughs> is what frame is it on? So it's on a four-door JK frame. Okay. And obviously that has its own challenges because the frame rail spacing is so different from the it original is, vehicle. Yeah. But it's a little bit wider. But, but you get all the benefit of all the suspension and stuff exactly. that you Exactly. So you can, you know, as a Jeep guy, sure. it's free range. Yeah. You can do pretty much whatever Everything, you want. Yeah. So I did. I made my own triangulated four-link, did a three-link in the front. East Coast gear supply axles, metal cloak springs, which metal cloak, they're yep. the best. I mean, and you can actually get them right now. And you can actually get the yeah, stuff. That's yeah. the cool part. So you got a set of steelies on here. Yeah. So we did Detroit steel wheels uh, and then wrapped it in the Toyo RTs. These are the new uh, RT trails. The new, the which new we've ones. driven. We love these tires. These tires are awesome. So I've got like 25 minutes on them. All right. When, so, when you have an hour and 25 minutes, you'll yeah, start really loving exactly. it. Exactly. So yeah, we finished it Friday night and had to load up and roll. I love how you yeah. have the, the the mini moons, the Willis yeah. mini moons with the logo in the middle. Yeah. But these aren't just a normal steely. These are the ones that have the uh, rectangular slots yeah. on the outer edge. Yeah. So they adds, call it the Delray. Just, yeah, yeah. Just adds a little bit of style. So a little touch for people imagining at home. It's a it's a Willis wagon. Yeah. And it's all black on black on black on black. And the only pops of chrome are your grill, your headlight buckets, your uh, bumpers, and those little oh, mini oh, moons. Oh, in oh, there. I have to oh, correct you. Oh. Take off your sunglasses, Holman. Wait, what? take them off. Now look. I don't know. Oh, it's purple. Wait, is it purple? It's purple. The, okay, so the light so, is horrible here. <laughs> yeah. Right, because we yeah. have clouds today. Yeah. All right, well, so, it's, it's purple and black then. Yeah, so in the dark, it's black. Yeah. When it's nice and sunny, it's purple. And it's not nice and sunny right now, no. but now you're right. There's a lot of purple there coming through. There's a lot through, of purple. A lot of purple All right, comes through. Look at it close. Yeah, our paint shop did an excellent job. Ran TJ seats in it, K5 rear seat, reupholstered. Just kept it simple. What's under the hood? Uh, so we did an LQ9. 60 LS, 4L80, 231 transfer case. I mean, if you like that sort of thing. <laughs> but, you know, it goes down to like the Jeep guys. Yeah. Everything's available. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like you can get them. There's tons of aftermarket parts for them. I love how in the little pop-up air vent in the cowl, you have mounted two mini light bars in there. Yeah. Like that is two, so cool. Two four-inch yeah. long light bars. Yeah. I mean... We knew it was going to be non-functional, but I didn't want to get rid of it. The hood scoop. Like, yeah. Well, I didn't want to get rid of it, and we're like, what do yeah. we do with it? Let's put lights in it. kind of cool, actually. Yeah. yeah, it turned out real good. I'm pretty proud of this project. What was the condition of the donor vehicle prior to uh, you which guys one? doing it? Let's start with which oh, one. Which one? <laughs> yeah, oh, which one? All right. So how many Willys wagons are in this Wait, did final? you say Willys or Willis? Well, I say both, but oh, Willis is correct. Yeah, Willis. All right. Bust my ass. Uh, well, that's <laughs> Come on now. All right. So how many vehicles are in this one? Uh, two. Oh, okay. Not well, it's not too bad. Not too bad, okay. but two. Um, about six sheets of 18 gauge. <laughs> okay. You know? Yeah. It's it's quite a bit. Yeah. We So the main thing was the floor. Neither one of the two I had it had a floor. So in the back, we used wow. like C10 floor pans yep. and then made everything else around it. So is this your job? Is this your hobby? Do you have a shop? I have a shop, Hardline Customs. Okay, where are you based out of? Um, Woodstock, Georgia. Okay. Yeah. So we have a shop. I do lift kit, leveling kit, wheel tire. Yeah, of course. And then we have like long terms, we call them. So I got two racks for long terms. We'll do, you know, I got a C10 in there and it's going to so be a few a year, probably a handful of years. Yeah, a handful of year. Yeah. This one was a year. 
So well, it's, it, it, it's it was well worth the wait. This thing is absolutely yeah, beautiful. It's pretty crazy. And it's subtle. It's, this is again yeah, one of those subtleness because everybody looks at it. They know they yeah. know what it is. Yeah. But they don't know that the front fender's up four inches. Sure. Yeah. They don't you know. basically made high lines in the yeah, fenders. Yeah. Exactly. What other hidden body mods are on it? So uh, rear fender flares. Rear fender flares. Okay. Um, hidden gas door. Okay. Where Top. is the gas door? It's hidden behind the tail light. Ah. Uh, <laughs> wait. Let me see that. Come bring Come me over there. Let's go. Oh. So would you wild. look at oh, that? Oh, take that out. Yeah. So that's off an F-150. Okay. So we just bought a new F-150. So the yeah. filler port is yeah. an F-150. Yeah. A capless style. Capless style. You don't want to stick your hand in there. No. Turn just the, the hinge and... mechanism that you put on here is really ingenious here. We Close made... that up like that. Yep. Boom. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we made that. And then we did a hinge system back here, too, which is pretty All right, So he's wild. lifting there we the go. Uh, rear gate up. Oh, oh look, look at, at the this. floor. The floor oh, is gorgeous. Oh, look at the hinge above your head. Oh yeah, so that's like, a, uh, like yeah. a six bar linkage. Yeah, yep. yep. it's pretty wild. We kind of borrowed, went on the internet, and you look at boat hinges. Yes. Same kind. And very, just made them very ourselves. cool. So if people wanted to uh, find out more about this vehicle, do you, uh, is it online somewhere? Does it have an Instagram yeah. or the yeah, show? Yeah, Hardline Customs. Okay. Awesome. Is our Instagram, and cool. then uh, yeah, check it out because you guys same as the web. Our website is Hardline Customs. If you guys are uh, a fan of uh, these custom vehicles like we are, that you'll definitely want to check them out because this one is really pretty. Yeah, the, I've the, done. The beauty is how subtle it is. Yeah, exactly, and that's what we were going for. You know, the things that you look at it, you know what it is, but you don't know what's changed about it. I feel like was there a logo in the back of this gate originally? Only on or certain years. And if you notice, look at the gauges in the front. Yeah. These have a really unique dash to them. Yeah. Very Art that's Deco. Not, that's and, not original, though. No. So that's CJ. Yep. Well, yeah, your gauges. Uh, yeah. Your gauges. But there's nothing in front of the steering wheel. Yeah, nothing. So on some models, there would be a radio there. Sure. And then you just pop the door down, your radio's behind it. Gotcha. So there's these are a lot of hidden nods on this, yeah. which is really cool. And that's kind of the way we went with it, you yeah. know? Well, thanks, Jerry uh, Harding. Oh, we really appreciate you yeah, walking man. us through this thing. is uh, is gorgeous, and was, we're glad that uh, we had a chance to dive into the details with you. Yeah, that was fun. Are you like one of the shops that's backed up for like six years where I can't uh, bring my car to you? Two years. Two years. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. You don't have a car to bring to him anyway. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Holman, we're standing with Ralph Holguin, and he has a beautiful Bronco called Urban Madness 2, which he's going to tell us about. Yes. Yeah, hey, guys. Awesome. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. The Urban Madness 2.0. You know, in 2018, we brought out our 69 Bronco, which was Urban Madness, the first kind of like wild thought that we had. And uh, we're usually building hot rods, so it was good to break away and do something different. So, of course, when we had the chance to work with Ford and built the 2021 two-door, I chose the two-door. Well, you're just showing off now. When we when yeah, we, we had a chance to work with Ford. Ford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you guys don't know that. So Ralph owns Connection R dropping. RMD Garage, right? <laughs> RMD Garage, right? right? And just Google it; it'll pop yeah, up, and you'll see you'll, all sorts oh, of stuff. Oh, that, that guy! That guy! Why did he build an overlanding two-door Bronco with a trailer? Why, right, man? Why not? Why not? Right? Exactly. That is the question. And how to do it and do it right, right? For us, was really. You know, again, we took that 69, did a bunch of different things. So with this one here, it was all about that 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 California flair, right? Whether you're going or to the beach. Or as some would call California pompousness in right. our case. Our, yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. Or California pompous, you know. But uh, it, it is about that flair, right? And then adding that trailer to it and having my guys kind of break away from the car build and build sure. this trailer. And, and just kind of hearing the buzz about it. It's been phenomenal, to be honest with you guys. It's been absolutely so, phenomenal. Phenomenal. What's the color of the blue? So that is the original uh, Velocity Blue. Velocity Blue. And um, we've obviously color sanded, buffed it, and did a bunch of stuff to it to make it unique. Make it, and because make it, it looks, pop. it looks awesome. It instead looks of so uh, orange good. Good. Yeah, 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 yeah. It looks so good. That's and the then, cleanest factory paint job I think <laughs> I've ever what, seen. Somebody hey, that, took care. That's what I love. And yep. then we added that beautiful peanut butter leather inside. Um, we obviously pocketed the seat so you had uh, air coming through the yep. back. All kinds of really cool leather treatments. Matching graphics, matching trailer. Absolutely. Yeah, so you brought that peanut butter outside, which is really. Well, it begs the question: creamy or chunky peanut butter? No, creamy, 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 oh, creamy yeah. baby. Yeah. <laughs> High fiving people. High fiving. No, no, I gotta go yeah. chunky. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So um, the crazy thing too is the trailer we built it in four weeks. I challenged wow. my team. Um, you know, we've just been really slammed. We've You're been. Just 
call the boss. Work. No, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, they love the overtime. Trust me. Yeah. Oh, okay, good they point. love the overtime. Don't let them fool you. you. Four say, weeks? Did what? you say four weeks? How about three, boss? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just a, how many hours is what it takes, yeah, right? Yeah, right. Um, but we're really proud of how it turned out and then and that combination. So that's really cool for so us. You tied in the same blue all the way through, but on the lower half at Angular, is that a is that Rhino Line or is it Line X? What is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we'll use on the trailer. Uh, yeah, trailer. Yes, Sorry. on the bottom of the trailer, we wanted to use obviously a liner that just gave us that texture and it protected us from the rocks and uh, uh, it fit perfect. But we gave it a really good contour line, kind of shaped it around the trailer, gave it that look, and then we added a satin finish, a BASF satin finish on top. That really, it's the same velocity blue, but in a satin finish. Yeah, it looks looks awesome. And then you have matching. Uh, Wheel and tire package on the trailer and the Bronco. That's You're right. using the new Open Country RT trails, which we love. In a uh, and basically you got 35s on the Bronco and then a uh, 265, 75, 16 on the trailer. Man, look at him. He knows yeah. his tires. Man, I don't have to say anything, but <laughs> you're absolutely right. We love the new tire. We love the it's way so it good. looks. It complements the Bronco. We love being able to obviously have the matching wheels, and that's really I what. I love the race lines. About. Look really good. Yeah, the race lines look really good. They're not overly done, and I, I just wanted to be a little. Little bit subtle uh, where it mattered and then obviously a little bit louder where we needed it so so what, what made you decide to go matte black on the wheels as opposed to tying them into a you know, blue or, or maybe the peanut butter you know what and that's where that, that's a great question because when we started to put in the bumpers and the doors and things we that black started to come alive for us and then we're like let's just leave it let's just leave it because it really added us amazing accent so um, I think it ended up working out well um, I would have loved to have a two-piece wheel, to be honest, sure. at the end after I finish, but I'm happy with what we came up with, and it looks it looks amazing. So, so. what's the plan for this? Where, where, where does it go next? What I'm are you excited. Gonna do it? It's gonna, you know, there's talks. It's gonna go to the Ford booth at the LA Auto Show. Nice. So that's awesome for us. And then working with our sponsors, you know, Gold Zero. This is fully powered by Gold Zero um, solar panels. So we love that. And of course, they go to shows too. So we want to make sure that we built a great piece that all of our partners could use. We sure. got the beautiful Pelican cases on top. We got so many uh, little things. So. These are two two of our favorites, Bill Stein shocks. Oh yeah, yes. and also California car cover. That's right. Did they make you a cover for the whole thing, custom made, for the they, roof rack and all? They made an amazing cover, last minute too. Like all our friend right. Jimmy DeFrank. You know, Tony took care of us. Yeah. He put the we put the cover and then obviously the cover on the trailer, um, which is very rare, right? Because we're building and then finishing. So the fact that we got great partnerships, they can go to work really quick and get a uh, custom stuff made i think that's what it's all about but that's what sema represents is that hustle right and all yeah. of our partners know it and that's the great thing about it you see that you're, all the love that happens here yeah, the, at the community of the build right yeah, absolutely it, is, it builds part of it and, and that 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 is actually one of the reasons we love to build is because of what it does and who sure. it brings and how it breaks those uh, barriers and in, in, in languages you know i have people from all over the world yeah. saying hi to us and it's all about because of the vehicles right and and the passion we have together, and then it brings us together, which is what we need anyways. We need more love. W would it feel weird if you didn't hustle before SEMA? Like if you had a car done a month and a half adva in advance? You know, we have the Ranchero. I'll be honest, we have the Ranchero that's inside the, the Tread Pass. It's our 73 Ranchero, and it felt so weird to put it away in the spray booth so that it wouldn't get dusty five days before SEMA. <laughs> five yeah. days. Five days. It felt like we had abandoned it. <laughs> but it was no it was done it was yeah. ready and we I felt like oh god are we not paying attention yeah but what did, did we I miss did I, exactly <laughs> yeah. exactly but you're absolutely yeah. right I Just, think it's that um you know we all kind of hate it but love it at the same time because it's about um, what it makes you do and to see as a human what you can pull out of you and your team D and then that camaraderie let's be honest when you're sitting there and you're all burned out and then that food comes in, and you out lap, <laughs> yeah, and, you, yeah, yeah. and you say stupid Break shit bread, to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> well, we but say the stupid shit to each other all the time. All the time, right? But that moment right there, that's priceless. That's priceless. You could, I mean... Do you feel like it ages you, though? Because sometimes going without the sleep that last week before SEMA is just brutal. Especially when you don't sleep at SEMA. No, and that's... We're, we're lucky. We know when to tap out, right? So we haven't gone... We, have, we haven't done a no sleep in a long time yeah. and that's by design right i think that you that get older and wiser you, and exactly you got to be yeah. smarter especially yeah. with your team and you got to be conscious of of 
what surrounds them, their support system, their families, everything. And I'm all about making sure that they have a balance, right? Is it um, cool being known for something different at SEMA this year? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what it's about. I think that, um, you know, like we love the hot rods. We love everything. But to come out and obviously we did build the Bronco with so much intention and we built the, the trailer with so much passion and to see the trailer get so much love and recognition um, because I think that's where we're at. As, uh, people want to get out, right? People are looking for how to escape, how to get out. Well, it started like crazy during COVID. Like everyone just went stir crazy and then they started buying anything that would help them get out in nature. That's right. People realize, you know, life is short. There is no, you know, we don't have a no guarantee. Yeah. And uh, I better enjoy it in a different way. So, yeah, it has taught us so much. Unfortunately, it, it's unfortunate that stuff like that has to happen to teach us or to make us reflect. But, you know, I'm glad it at least it does. Yeah. Well, if you want to see the uh, the Bronco in the trailer, go to at RMD. S garage on social and you guys can check it out it's, it's a really cool build the the interior is very modular on the trailer it's, it's just really thoughtful and, and it's a great looker so i appreciate your time this is really cool no thank you guys so much and good luck and keep doing it baby all right keep talking the talk we're not gonna dream it we're gonna build it that's right don't dream it <laughs> build it thank you ralph thank you guys Holman, can we just camp out here for the rest of the afternoon? No, because we have lots of other interviews to do. Oh, okay, got it. This, All right, this well, is only one part of our massive SEMA experience. Listen, thank you very much to Toyo for having us out here in the Tread Pass. And if you're looking for an amazing uh, all-terrain tire that's a little more aggressive than an all-terrain, the Open Country RT Trail is just stellar. And they look good on all these uh, built rigs out here. So from a standpoint of style and mm -hmm. seeing all these rigs, great. But... I hope these people plan on taking these trucks off road. At least the four by fours. I think your they, buddy they here deserve with to get the, the Bronco will the yellow Bronco. To, yeah, they deserve to get uh, get used. What was the yellow color that he named? Uh, not so mellow. Not yellow. so mellow yellow. Yeah. That's going to go off road. Thanks, Toyo, for letting us come to Tread Pass. If you're looking for a Nissan truck, head over to nissanusa.com. And if you need any accessories, performance, otherwise functional, you want to go to bankspower.com. You can put in your year, make, model, find out all the great stuff they offer. Uh, all right, Lightning, uh, that's it for Tread Pass, but we have a whole lot of semen to cover, so we better get moving. We've only done like one sixteenth of it so far. Uh, maybe smaller. That's what she said. And yeah, that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> can we just go finish the rest of SEMA and do some interviews for the next episode? Yes, whatever you say. All right, that way. The Truck Show Podcast, live from the SEMA Show in Las Vegas. Presented by Nissan, Banks Power, and Toyo Tires.